All right, guys, welcome back. Thanks for coming to another one of my tutorial videos. Um, I am very excited to be back working on this. Um, on this video, I'm going to be taking a sculpted miniature from uh, Asgard Rising. Um, we are going to first texture and add materials to it. Then once we've got that all set up, we are going to light it, bake all of the lighting into the model, and then reduce the resolution low enough that we can get it imported into Tabletop Simulator. So let's get started. All right, so for this tutorial, we are going to be setting up a high res sculpted model to be used in Tabletop Simulator. Uh, so there is a variety of sources you could go to get any sort of high res models. Um, for this one, I am using one from Asgard Rising that I am a patron, uh, patron of. I'll leave a link to their Patreon. Specifically, I wanted to use theirs just because I, I like their models and they are really good quality. Um, the sculpts are really impressive, so it should work really well with the light. But if you needed any specific ones, there's plenty on Thingiverse. Um, I would definitely recommend going through that at least to try and kind of find what you can find. Um, so if you can find a model that you like, you can definitely uh, go off of that and then just download the file. And you can do everything that I'm doing here with any absolutely any model that's set up for 3d printing um you can also go to like sketchfab or something like that and get a lot of models there's a lot of really good looking models that are not optimized for tabletop simulator that you can use and that's why i wanted to do this one because chances are anything that you're looking for you can find if you're if you're kind of looking, if you can take anything. So by using this kind of technique, you can get a good looking miniature into Tabletop Simulator that will serve pretty much any of your needs. So we're starting on the basic empty scene. Um, so you're just gonna hit A to select everything and delete. And um, so first thing we're gonna do, we're going to go file and import a lot of the, all of the ones on Thingiverse will be a .stl file. Um, sometimes you'll get a .obj or an .fbx file, but any of them will work. In this case, it's going to be an STL though, so I'm just going to go to my file. This uh, Asgard Rising one has three parts. His left hand, his right hand, and his body. I'm going to import those. In this specific case, once it is done importing, um, in this specific case, it's angled incorrectly, so and now they're all in. You can see they're all selected because they are orange on the side. I'm gonna hit the period button to zoom out to see it. And I'm gonna hit three in order to get the side view. And now just to get it all rotated the right way because you can see it's on its back right now. We're gonna rotate on, by hitting R and then X for on the X axis and 90 on the numpad in order to rotate it 90 degrees. So now here he is looking correct, hitting period just to center on him. And there it is, and we are all good on that. So, because this is separate parts, both hands and the body, I'm just gonna hit A to select everything, and then Control J to join it all together. So now it is all in one model. So the biggest thing you are going to notice is when you hit Tab to go into edit mode, A, it's just super slow, and then look at all of these vertices. It's an obscene amount of vertices on here. Um, so there's so many vertices because of the fact that it was sculpted that we essentially can't work with it this way. So we are going to go into the modifier stack and we are going to add in a decimate modifier. We're going to go over to collapse and for the ratio, right now we're looking at, if you look at the bottom, we've got 800,000 faces. We want probably close to 140 maybe 120 to 150,000 faces to work with so that everything runs smoothly, but we still have enough resolution that it all looks good. So I'm going to collapse it down by 0.15. So it's only, it's getting ready, rid of about 95% of the vertices. 
So put 0.15, hit enter, and we're just gonna wait, and there it goes. So now the face count is at 121. So that should make it quite a bit more doable. Because I have the file, the original STL saved on my hard drive, I'm just gonna apply this. I don't need to keep you know, the unmodified version. It's gonna take just a second to apply it. And then we go into edit mode, and now you can see there's way fewer vertices. So, and then we can pop in and out of edit mode a lot quicker. And so that's what we want out of it. So, the next step, we are going to set up a UV map for this. So, in the UV editor, just gonna hit tab to go into the edit mode, hit U for UV, and then we're gonna pick Smart UV Project. I'm gonna keep everything standard correct aspect, stretch to UV bounds, and angle limit of 66 degrees. Hit OK. This is still gonna take a minute because it's taking every part of this model and it's unwrapping it. So first it's it has it has still has a lot of vertices to deal with. This is still right now we are still you know, close to 10 times as many vertices as we're going to want in Tabletop Simulator. But we want to keep all of that detail for now so that when we paint everything on, it still looks good. And then we are going to bake the lighting onto it in order to then have a much nicer looking model in Tabletop Simulator later. So this is going to take just a minute and I will cut here and I will cut back when it's done. All right, so we are back in. If I deselect everything on the UV map, you can see it is all there, every single vertice or vertex. So we are all set. We've got this all UV unwrapped now. Next step that we are going to want to do is we're going to tab back out. We are going to go into the shader editor. And before I forget, I'm just going to switch this over to cycles for a lot of the baking and everything like that. We are going to need cycles we are going to go into the material editor and hit new to do new material and i'm just going to name this one um my our first color that we're going to work with so i'm just going to call it skin tan um and at this very moment we're not going to do anything with that but we i just want to name it so that that way we kind of keep a good consistent naming system through the rest of it so in the note editor panel we're going to hit shift a and we are going to add in a texture and image texture and shift a and we are going to add in a input and uv map just to make sure we select our uv map and drop it in so that is going to map this image texture to our uv map we are going to hit new and we are going to name it um, I'm going to name it because he is a berserker, so I'm going to name it berserker underscore AO for ambient occlusion. So that is going to make it so the areas that are more recessed are going to be dark, and the areas that are more exposed are going to be lighter. For size, I'm just going to do 2048 by 2048 because that will be our target final texture size because I know Tabletop Simulator will accept 2048 by 2048. So I'm just going to stick with that. So we're going to hit OK. And now this is all set. What we're going to do with this image file, if we go back into the UV editor, we can actually pull Berserker AO, and there it is. It's just a black rectangle. We're going to tab into edit mode, select everything, select everything here. Go over to the shader editor, make sure we have Berserker AO selected. And now that we are over here, we're going to go into the render settings go down to bake for bake type we are going to pick ambient occlusion and you just hit bake and this is just going to take a minute what this so what this will do is it is going to simulate how light in every direction would potentially hit the model the main reason i'm using this is that we are going to be texturing this model in a way that would be comparable to if you were using a physical miniature and you were hand painting it we're going to have our base color we're going to have a highlight color and we are going to have a shade color so just like when you're throwing a shade down on everything and all the re all the color the darker color is getting into the recesses this ambient occlusion is going to tell it where the darker color goes so now if i tab out of here you can see there's darker areas and there's lighter areas and we are going to switch back over to the shader editor. And we're just going to take these, 
Hold shift to click on the second one and then G to grab them and we are going to move them over. And we are just going to drop the color into the base color just to make sure it works. You can see nothing has happened. You hit Z and then we'll hit look dev and that will let us see everything that's happening. And now you can see the darker spots are dark and the lighter spots are light. And honestly, it adds a lot of dimension to it. You could straight up just bake this and it would have so much more detail once you once we lower the resolution than it would otherwise just having this texture but we're going to take it to the next level so now we've got our ambient occlusion file before i forget let's go back over to the uv editor we've got the ambient occlusion we're going to go image and save and i am just going to save it right here in my tutorial folder berserker underscore ao dot png save as image that way we don't lose it. If you close everything and reopen it, it will not save your file unless you physically save it. So it's useful to have. Um, so now we are going into our shader editor. Um, we are going to add in um, a, we are going to add in an input and an RGB input. This is going to be our base color. For the base color, I'm going to pick sort of a tan for his skin and I don't want it too saturated we're just gonna drop it straight in and we're gonna see how it looks and that for the most part looks like a pretty good base core color I'm going to click on it hold shift and D that's gonna duplicate it so now we are going to take this and because I want to get that effect of in the shaded shaded areas there's more light bouncing around in there and everything and just like when you're painting a physical miniature you're using like Reichlin flesh shade instead of like you know Agrax earth shade for like the Citadel paints instead of it just being like a darker brown we want it to go more toward red we want it to go darker we're gonna do something like that to start and see how it looks so now we're going to do shift A to add in and then go to color mix RGB drop that in we're going to mix in our other color right now it's just kind of blending between the two we're going to use our ambient occlusion to put into the factor and as you can see it has done it opposite where the exposed areas are the darker parts and the lighter part is in the recesses that's not what we want so we're going to do shift a and then converter uh, is it converter it might actually be color and invert that's what we want so first we're just going to invert it. So now you can see almost all of it is the lighter color. And we don't want that. We're going to want it to be a little bit smoother than that. So we're going to do shift A. We want a little bit more control over all of that. So we're going to go and add in a color ramp node. This will let us blend the dark and the light more. So if we want, if we want more of the darker color, it's still kind of odd because it's going to be backwards. But if we want more of the darker color, we just bring up the white. And if we want more of the lighter color, then we bring in the left. So we want it kind of still to look smooth. So we're going to do it something around like that. And I think that looks pretty good. Uh, the tan color, I kind of want it to be... Just kind of moving it around to try to get a good feel for the color. And I think I like that. The red, I'm kind of wanting a more saturated red, I think. And I think I'm liking how that's looking so far. So we're going to stick with that. That's going to be our skin color to start with. But there's one more level that I want to get, and that's the highlight. So we're going to do B for box select. Select everything. And then we're just going to click and drag to move it over. We are going to take the color ramp and the invert. Hold Shift D. Duplicate them. Bring this up. This time we are not going to invert it actually. Because what we want is we are going to mix between this guy and a third color. And this color is going to be our highlight color. So it's going to be an almost complete white for the skin um, for the skin highlight for other ones we might potentially want and I'm putting that in color one and I'm putting the mix output into color two 
Um, for the other colors, uh, the highlight might be a lot darker. It really, you know, it's going to depend on, just like anything else with color theory, what exactly you're doing. So, so now we've got this. And so now we're going to play with it. And as you can see, actually, we are going to want that inverted again. So we're going to add in vector, no, convert, nope, color, color and invert. And there we go. So I want to bring in a lot of the core color because I just want kind of the slightest highlight there. There we go, and that gives us that nice multi-dimensional look. It really adds a lot to the miniature and makes it look, makes it stand out a lot. So I'm happy with that right there. We've got our highlight, we've got our shade, and we've got our base color. And that's everything that we need for the core basics of this idea. Our next step, so now we've got our skin color. And so what we're going to do next, we're going to need a few more colors for this. I'm in this one, I'm going to make it kind of simple. I just want to do his hair. I want to do wood and leather, like a brown for all of that. I want to do a metallic for the metal. And that's all we're going to do. And a lot, normally, a lot of times you might want to do, you know, specific colors for different hides on a skin. You'd want to, you know, you might want to do like gray for the fur on his bracers and things like that. In this case, we're going to go kind of bare bones. So we're just going to do those. Um, so I'm going to add in a new material and I'm going to take the tan skin one and then I'm going to hit new material and this will let us do our next one. And this is going to be metal and I'm just going to call it metal because it's just metal. Um, <clears throat> and I am going to go into edit mode and I did Alt A to deselect everything, A to select everything. And we are going to assign everything to the metal texture, and, or the metal material. And what we're gonna do with the metal material, because now we have that selected versus the other one. Um, in the metal material, we are going to first, we're gonna bump up the metallic, and already it's pretty cool. Um, so we've got the metallic bumped all the way up. That gives it a pretty good look. We are going to, I'm just going to play around a little bit. You can start to see where you can actually see the faces in it. Um, so before I move on, I just want to go into object and I thought it was invisibility. It may not be. I do not see it. We are just going to do the old school traditional smooth shading. So we're going to do tab, select everything, and then we're going to mesh, shading, smooth faces. And that's just going to smooth it out a little bit. And now it looks a lot cleaner. So that's what we're, that's what we're trying to get out of it. Um, so now in the metallic, we are going to shift everything over. So we're going to start with we're going to start with a more dark gunmetal sort of gray with the shade. We're going to go with like a kind of a brownish, a dark brown sort of shade. And that way it looks kind of grungy a little bit. And on the highlight, we're also going to want to make sure that the highlight is also sort of blue. And we're going to drop that down a little bit as well. And that's giving us kind of a better sort of metallic. Um, we can play around with the color ramps and everything as well, which I'm probably going to do because I think I want this to be a little less saturated. I just want it to be the slightest hint of blue just to kind of set it off a little bit. Um, and for the shade, I'm going to want a little bit more shade. So... I think I'm liking that and then for the for the highlight yeah we're gonna want to bump it a little bit in that direction and then I would kind of want a more distinct highlight so I'm gonna bump that a little closer and currently I think the highlight is a little too dull so we're going to 
bump up the lightness on the highlight as well. And see, right now we're seeing it on everything, but when it's actually done, we're only going to see that on the metal parts. So kind of getting it set up ahead of time is, is good for getting stuff started. And then the last thing we are going to want to do is we're going to want to tweak the roughness. Because since it's metal, we don't want a lot of roughness. And I'm going to take another input from this ambient occlusion. And, and yep, and we are just going to drag that right over into, oh, I lost it. Let's see. If you drag it into the wrong one, you can hold, hold down control and then drop it into another one. So we're going to drag it into roughness. And so now you see it's made it extremely not rough. I'm going to take a color ramp, shift D, drop it onto there. And I'm just going to pull this down to keep it out of the way. And so we want very, we want a lot of smoothness, but I want it to be, and that's the opposite of what we want. So we're going to switch it. And I want it to be a little bit more matte in the shaded areas. There we go. And the shiniest parts, I want to be a little bit less shiny. So we want it maybe about there. So now we'll get some good reflections off of it. It'll still look impressive, but it's not going to be so overbearing and in your face that it's going to drive us crazy. So, so now we've got a good metal, uh, metal material set up. Um, so the next step that I will want to do is we are going to want to go in and we're going to set up, we're going to set up the metal in the spots where it's supposed to be because there's not that many spots. In this case, we've only got metal on the ax head and the backs and that's it. So we'll do those and then we'll just get, we'll start uh, we'll make everything the skin color first. So we select everything, go back to skin tan, hit assign. And as you can see, we're back to where everything is the skin color. And so our next step is going to be, we're going to go back into edit mode, go to face select. And that's going to make it a lot easier to see everything. It's also going to make it a lot easier to select everything. So for... Assigning multiple multiple materials. There's a few ways you can do it. You can always just select an individual face and hit assign. That's going to take forever though. Um, and so we're going to do primarily two different ways. We're going to do if you hit C, you can do circle select and you can use the mouse wheel to make it bigger or littler. Um, and the other thing we're going to do is B to do. Uh, we are going to do B to do box select, and that's going to let us select things in a box. Um, so the way I'm going to start with this, you can also do, um, I think, I think, I know you can do a lasso select. I typically don't do it personally, but I know there is a way. So first we are going to go and we're going to hit Z to go into wireframe and we are going to select everything in this axe because we can get a nice profile view of all of this from here. And we're just going to go through I'm gonna scroll down and I'm not I'm trying to avoid getting the very farthest edges because I don't want to back out of it later and I'm gonna hit period just to zoom in close and now you can see we've got most of the metal already selected and then I'm just gonna use the circle select just to go in and tidy all of this up and keep in mind too, these miniatures, we're, we're using them on tabletop simulator. You do not have to get every single face assigned perfectly to every single thing. Um, and especially when we get to the point with hair and things like that, you're going to be, I think, I think uh, everybody's patience will kind of start to slow down once you get to the point with the hair where you're trying to select every single one because there's there's still despite the fact that we decimated everything or and we got rid of a lot of vertices and we made this a lot 
more approachable than it was, it's still, there's still a lot of faces here. Um, if you are selecting and like, say we selected like right over here and we didn't want those, you can hit the middle mouse button and that'll deselect anything that you want to. Um, so before I move on, I'm going to assign that to the metal. And now you can see the head of the ax is all metal, which is exactly what we want. We're going to move on, hit Alt A to deselect that. And we are just going to, I'm gonna try to get to a position, get the camera to a position so that I can use the wireframe and I can just select a majority of it so I don't have to worry about any of that. Hit period to zoom in on it. And now I'm just cleaning up the edges. And it's a lot like, it's a lot like actually, you know, the the whole idea of setting up textures this way is that you're trying, we're trying to get as close to the tabletop experience as we can. So it's really your miniatures, you're going over them kind of in the same way that you would go over with a paintbrush where you actually physically painting these miniatures. And the whole point of doing that is that I, I personally think, A, you get a really good result out of it. Um, it's really rewarding. Um, and it kind of, to me, it really achieves the main goal of what Tabletop Simulator has always been about, which is achieving the experience of playing on a tabletop. And when it comes to, for honestly, for people like me who prepping my stuff, making, um, getting my, the miniatures that I want, um, getting them painted and getting them looking exactly how I want them to look. All of that is, for me personally, is a part of the tabletop experience. And I mean, I like for, for example, I never played uh, Warhammer 40k. Um, I never like looked at miniature war game. I think I played it once maybe. Um, I never really though like paid any attention to miniature war gaming until I got tabletop simulator. And a big reason was because just the uh, the barrier to entry is so high. Um, and I used to do some miniature painting and things, but I really took off with miniature painting after I got Tabletop Simulator, mainly because of the fact that I already knew how to do 3D modeling and 3D graphics to a degree. And once I got into doing, once I got into Tabletop Simulator, and I started seeing all of these models that were available, and then I started... Uh, playing a little bit of Warhammer 40k with a few people um, and it, it it took this sudden change from instead of just being something where it was just about making your um, there we go I think that's pretty good I'm gonna assign that and that's looking pretty clean to me all of this is going to be brown basically once we're once we're done but I am going to make this a little metal stud um but when uh what was i talking about when we uh when i first started playing with tabletop simulator and i kind of saw there were all the you know there were all the space marines and everything and suddenly it went from hey i could try to play this game and i could spend a huge amount of money on it you know and maybe maybe hate it um, and then maybe kind of get halfway through buying and painting an army and decide, you know what, I hate this army or I hate this color scheme or anything. I could go into Tabletop Simulator, I could scrounge together the models, and then I could export them all out of Tabletop Simulator. I could kit bash and retexture and make them into my own custom chapter or whatever. Um, and by being able to do that, that really... To me, that really, uh, that got me excited to do it on the actual tabletop. And it, it opened up a lot of options to play that I hadn't ever really engaged with before. So that's, that's why, and then now I spend a lot of time painting miniatures and I do 
a lot of customizing and I 3D print models and I kit bash and all sorts of things. And I wouldn't have done that if Tabletop Simulator hadn't shown me how much I would enjoy it. Um, so, point being, I think the experience of working with miniatures and getting them ready for the tabletop and then um, and then getting to enjoy creating an experience for players, you know, or building a narrative collaboratively with people in wargaming um, really is what makes it fun and honestly um, I mean, Games Workshop has built their entire business around part of playing is painting your miniatures, customizing them, get, making them your own. And by being able to go in and do that in Tabletop Simulator, I, f I feel like without that, it's just it's just a rig it's just a board game, you know. Um, so that's that's why I get really into this, and that's why I think trying to get that tabletop style of look out of the miniatures is really enjoyable and even though I've done I've done some miniatures where they're photorealistic and things and I like those but when I do these kinds I I think I like them in their own unique way because I feel like it's like I painted this miniature now you know um so we've got the metal put in so the core things we have left are we have the, we're gonna do the same brown for the wood as we are going to do for the leather. Um, and we are going to do the hair. So it should be pretty quick work here though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in another material and we're going to select the skin tan material and hit the new material. We're gonna name this wood leather brown because I just want to keep my colors and what it's referencing together since the metal is metal I'm not I'm just naming it metal but everything else I want to kind of keep the the color and what it's for together so now in the wood and leather brown what we're going to do first is I'm just going to go into the shader editor and we are right over here and I'm just going to, I'm gonna make it different. Um, it's not going to, we're not gonna be able to see it yet because we haven't applied anything to it at this point. So first things we're gonna do is we're just gonna go back into wireframe. I'm just gonna use the circular select. I'm gonna select all of this. And what you wanna make sure to do before you hit assign because we selected a bunch of the metal and we don't want to undo the work we already did so we're going to click on metal we're going to click deselect it's going to get rid of everything that's metal on there and i'm just going to assign it so now i've got part of the wood assigned to that color um so now we can look at just the handle here i'm just going to go into edit mode hit period to zoom in on it go back out of edit mode just to get a good look at it um, and what we're going to want out of this wood is the highlights. We are going to still want it to be fairly brown. So I'm actually going to do like a deeper color for the highlights. The base color, I'm going to do a pretty saturated and pretty ruddy kind of brown. And I'm actually going to bring this down a little bit because I want to make sure it all kind of blends for the most part and that looks pretty good I'm gonna desaturate it a little bit there we go and I think I'm liking that for the most part and just to give it kind of that earthy woody sort of color um I'm going to take this you can also go in and if you click on the color you can get this um this uh this color picker normally it starts off at rgb which i personally don't care for if you do hsv for hue saturation vial uh value then you can actually adjust like just kind of shift the hue a little to the left or the right um bump up or bump down the saturation um so i i like doing the this way quite a bit so we're going to do kind of an earthy green we're going to decrease the saturation and we're going to drop the value and that's going to give it almost kind of like a mossy sort of color is the idea. And I want more of it. Um, so we're just going to play with our color ramp a little bit here. 
and we're actually we're gonna drop that there a little bit the black I'm actually going to raise the value so that's gonna make it so it it adds that green in everywhere essentially and now we're working with three different colors though so the challenge with it is is that you really as you're playing with one slider you have to kind of go over play with the other slider the black I'm gonna keep the black as like only the most the highest of highlights and I'm also going to raise the value because the black on this color ramp is our is our highlight so the more we bring it down the more we bring it to white the less visible it is so we're just gonna have just a little bit on there for that and I think I'm liking that wood I think it's got some earthy tone to it um, I could I could play around with this forever um, so eventually it does have to hit a point where you're done with it bring the, the value down a little bit but I think I'm happy with that so we've got the wood color set um, and so what I'm going to do now is I'm just selecting around um, around the the hand just to get all of that assigned to the wood and I've done this selection process a couple times originally the first time I tried it I did it more of like kind of a sloppy haphazard way and then kind of went around and cleaned it up um, after doing that once I don't really care for it I think I like it a lot more doing it this way where you kind of um, <clears throat> where you kind of go in and clean it up as you go um, so we're just going to go wireframe and we're going to select all of that there so if it, if it looks clean it, it, kind of getting it to look clean on the first pass is really the main goal um, so we're just going to try to keep all of our we're going to try to keep a clear sort of delineation between his hand and the handle of his axe so we're just going through kind of skirting around it once in a while the rest of the model will get in your way usually I just kind of move to a different position if you want to you can hit five on the numpad and that will get you into perspective mode when it's in perspective mode as opposed to orthographic mode which was what we were in before um, you can usually kind of, you can really get deep into these tight areas um, I don't like it as much because I don't like the the way the way the perspective kind of affects things when I'm looking at it kind of gets a little aggravating to me so I'm not doing too much but we have the metal selected so we've we've selected the rest of the handle though so we're going to deselect the metal and then we are going to assign that to the brown so now his handle is assigned I don't like what is going on right here on his hand so I'm just going to go in and see what I can do um, I'm guessing it's kind of trying to bridge this separation right there so I think if I assign it there that's not too bad keep in mind when it's on the table you're gonna be up here you're not gonna see that so um, I think I am good with that I'm gonna let it go there on that one um, so next step I'm just gonna click on one face just to get kind of my camera to be orbiting properly um, and his beard is a little bit in the way but I think if I'm right there I can get most of the handle pretty well I'm trying to make sure I don't grab onto his beard because that'll cause me problems later so I've selected all of that and we don't have to worry about selecting all of or selecting any of the axe blade because when we're finished with all of this we're gonna deselect that so and in terms of your color choice and everything it's just like just like painting regular miniatures it's really it's gonna come down to what what you, the effect you're trying to get out of it I'm trying to get this kind of unkempt sort of grungy kind of effect to some of his stuff because he's a barbarian you know if it was like a paladin sort of character all of the wood would probably be pretty clean you know um, 
Just, uh, just kind of do, do what makes sense for you and make it your own. Primarily the goal of this video is to show you how to actually choose, uh, actually like set up the colors with the basic system of the highlights and low lights and shadows. Um, or the, the base colors, the highlights, and the shades. So, everything else is really up to your own preference, though. So, on this one, I'm just going to go back into wireframe, Alt-A to deselect what we already got. And I'm just going to get in there as tight as I can while making sure I'm not, not hitting anything I don't want to. So, we are just going to go back in, and keep in mind when you select stuff, um, it's something that I think takes a little bit of getting used to, but as you get used to it, it starts to not be a problem. You really don't want to, as you're dragging, you don't want to drag all the way up to the edge, because if we do something like this, then suddenly you turn and you move the camera and you've, chose, you've picked up a part of the model you didn't intend to. So I'm just going to hit Z, that's going to deselect the last kind of pass that I did. And so now we are going to move along through all of this. The main goal is we are just trying to select just the handle. Everything else we're just trying to leave as it is. And that way we've got most of the skin all selected. Because, the, because he's pretty naked, so the skin is the bulk of the miniature. If you were physically painting this, you would probably want to start with just the regular. You would you would want to base coat with skin, add in all the leather, add in all the metal. You know, um, <clears throat> go to metal, deselect, wood, leather, brown, and we're gonna assign that. And there we go. So now the handles of his axes are all set. Our next step is we are going to. We're going to go in and all of his, his like entire lower half is all covered in leather. So we're going to go into wireframe, edit, deselect, and I'm going to overextend a little bit here. We're going to select a little beyond the actual area that we want to cover. And that should get us pretty close. But you can see we still missed part of it right there. So I'm going to go in and select it just like that. Go back into look dev. And it looks like we've got all of it there. So now we're going to assign that. And it's a little sloppy looking in parts. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into edit mode. This way I can really focus in and just select the areas that I want to. Um, and I can just peel back the wood or the tan, the brown color and replace it with the skin again and that way we've got most of the brown done and we got it done efficiently but then we also because it'll be much easier to put the skin color back in here than it would be to um, try to get all of these little edges on the on the leather because there's so many little ridges here there's so much texture that was sculpted in by the artist that I really don't want to go in and try to hit every one of those little bits of fur and everything so I'm just going to go in like this and I'm just going to select the areas that I had painted with the brown and instead make them uh, Instead, I'm going to make make them skin colored. So this is just going to take just a minute. And as you as you do this on your own, it's going to take it's going to take you some practice probably to figure out the flow that works best for you. This is just what I've noticed really helped me get all of the materials assigned quickly and efficiently um so this is the way i would recommend doing it but that doesn't mean that it is the only way to do it you could definitely try some other things um the hard thing with 
doing and now I'm just gonna assign that to the skin and now we've got that nice clean ridge and that looks pretty good there's a little bit of spots that you could argue should be one way or another but overall I'm pretty happy with it the skin tan I am going to go in here and I'm going to give the same tan color to the runes that he's got going on here because I think that that color would be a little more appropriate to the material and this this is a very small detail so I'm going pretty quick and dirty on it I'm not going to spend an hour getting these small runes on because when it's actually in tabletop simulator these are going to be so small um so just getting kind of the impression of yep like yep there's something that's a different color there um it's an ornament of some sort that'll that'll read just fine don't yeah don't drive yourself crazy trying to i'm just doing Control z because i accidentally left clicked when i meant to middle click so i accidentally selected a bunch of faces I didn't want to. And we're just going in, getting the bulk of this. And to uh, to anybody who has been waiting patiently on my channel for the last over over a year definitely definitely over a year it may have been close on two years um i just want to say i thoroughly appreciate i really appreciate all of the uh support everybody has been giving in the comments of the other videos and i know a lot of people really wanted more uh, more content and look at that like in comparison to the leather that pops so much and it reads so clearly because it's not close to the skin so it doesn't read as skin it just it looks in contrast to the leather and it's super super visible so I'm really happy with how that turned out um so next let's let's get the rest of the leather there's not much left the only thing left is going to be his bracers so we're going to get started on that um but uh, but back to what I was saying. Um, everybody who uh, who was um, who was really supportive, um, I thoroughly appreciate it. Um, and I've been meaning to get more videos out for a while. Um, biggest thing has been um, between I don't I don't make any any money or anything off of this. So um, it's primarily been a combination of. Um, my work is pretty time consuming um so it doesn't give me a ton of free time um and also uh it was kind of not long after getting my other videos out um blender up like uh updated to 2.8 and all of the ui changes and everything completely threw me for a loop i didn't know anything about blender for quite a while so first after after blender updated and all of the new changes came came down the pike first i had to learn all of that and then try to find time to make videos um and get my own kind of stuff done as well and do my job and go to bed in time to be able to wake up for my actual job and it was it was a huge headache for quite a while so um but i know a lot of people were kind of waiting on some videos for how to um how to set set up a lot of the sort of elements that we did in the earlier tutorials with primarily with the uh the tiefling kit bash one um, so I'm hoping that if you're watching this now, a lot of, we are going to go into the material baking and everything. Um, in the past, I did a lot more of 
uh, where you would take textures and you kind of move them around in Photoshop or um, you kind of shift around the UV maps. And um, it was really nice for if you were working with a lot of different miniatures or if you were using the exact same textures for a lot of different miniatures it was really nice because then you could kind of cut and paste from what you wanted um but in terms of speed it's i do not i don't stand by it anymore essentially um so i so the way that i'm going to show you guys how to do that same sort of thing how to how to transfer textures between from one model to another um the way i'm going to show you guys in this one is texture baking and honestly texture baking i think um to me seems a little bit more alien at the start um but then once once you start doing it it makes a lot of sense it gets really easy and honestly if you're at this point and you're like i don't even know what texture baking is if you've been following along with the tutorial baking the ambient occlusion texture that we did at the very start is that we just baked a texture and um so when we get to the point where we're baking everything else i think it will be a lot more approachable than it seems once we get to that point so um so try not to let that seem daunting um i think you'll be you'll be happier in the end for having done it um so i'm just gonna hit l because so because of the fact in this exact case oh, didn't want to do that um because of the fact that the hand is all its own um separate model if i hover over it and i hit l it'll select the entire hand it won't select the rest of the model so i'm just gonna do Control z to deselect it now if i go over to his head and i hit l that's all the same model so it's gonna select everything so now that i've gotten that edge all around the bracer what i'm going to do is kind of the same thing that i've done before we're gonna go into wireframe mode and i am going to just select the bulk of this and I want to make sure though that I'm not undoing any progress that I did before and it looks like we're in pretty good shape so I'm just going to go in select some of the the loose faces that didn't get covered by that wireframe select but also didn't get covered by um, when we first selected everything and I'm just kind of looking around trying to track down every every little one and that's looking pretty good. And then we're just going to do shift or shift and L. And that's going to deselect everything on this separate hand. I'm going to go over to wood leather brown and assign it. And now his bracer it has that leather. So that's looking pretty good. Um, we've got one more bracer left. And then we're going to go in and do his hair and eyebrows. And that's really going to be it. This is going to be... A super quick process um, relatively speaking I know when oh shucks I know when uh yep I accidentally had the uh, the room still selected so we're going to go into wireframe mode because I already assigned the wood leather brown to that we're just gonna go into circuit circle select middle uh, uh, the mouse wheel just click and drag on with the mouse wheel over that to deselect all of that go back into look dev go to skin tan and assign those runes back to it there we go now we're all set for the other bracer and this is going to be basically the same process as the other one um so i'm going to uh quickly get through that and i will uh catch back up with you guys after that then Alright, so we are back in now. Um, we have the bracer all done. 
So most of this character is finished. The only thing left is his hair, which his hair is going to be a little bit harder of one. So first I'm going to do another material. I'm gonna add it in and I'm gonna make him red. I'm gonna give him red hair so he kind of pops with the rest of everything else. It'll contrast well with the green in the leather and everything. So I'm gonna call it red and hair. And for this one, I'm just going to go super red for right now, just so I can see it when I go in and deselect everything. And I'm going to go in and I'm gonna just paint in an area that I know is going to be part of his facial hair. We're just gonna start with that right there. Just kind of brush it in. I'm getting a little bit of slowdown on my computer at the moment, but I think recording and working with higher resolution models kind of gives it gives it some trouble. So we're just going to assign that real quick, go out, and that way we can at least see it. Um, and I'm going to take the highlight color, I'm going to make it a very pale kind of red just so that I've got everything set up. Um, I want more I want more of the model though uh, to work with to be able to before I start playing around with the texture. The nice thing with this this whole technique too is that as you go in and um, get everything set up before we're finished, we can make any changes we want to to all of the materials. So if I get to the end of it and I decide that that kind of like mossy color, I'm half thinking about it. I might keep it in this one just because I think it sets it off decently, but um, I could I could see myself being like, you know what, I don't like that mossy sort of effect in it because it's a little a little artificial. So if you were like, I don't like that anymore, you could change it to be a more brown kind of base color. A lot of his a lot of his beard is just overlapping shapes, so I can go in and really just hammer away at him. Um, some of it, like around his ear, we're going to have to be a little more careful. Um, but a lot of this we can just kind of hit everything we see. Um, because it doesn't, because his hair doesn't stick out in any spot or doesn't cover like an entire portion of um, of the model. We can't really go into wireframe and just select part of it. Um, so we are going to have to do all of his hair by hand, which does lend some additional challenges because it's very easy to do something like that. Um, it's, it's really easy to uh, kind of go over spots you already did and things like that. But um, we're just going to go through and try to get all of these parts taken care of and selected and then we'll be able to um and then once we've got all that assigned we can go in really tweak the color to be exactly what we want out of it um and on another note with with everything um since i'm kind of getting back into things um i would definitely like to hear your guys's opinions um I, I am also starting because uh, time has just been a challenge and getting these videos put together and edited and everything um, and kind of editing out any mistakes, taking multiple passes at things and stuff like that is a little bit time consuming. Um, I am also planning to do um, some Twitch streaming, not necessarily in any <clears throat> really consistent schedule because my my work schedule and everything varies quite a bit but um, I want to do I want to do enough that there's kind of some amount of uh, you know consistent opportunity for people to uh, come to me with questions or to bring up anything that they're learning um, I want to kind of get a get some amount of a read from the community on what you guys would like out of this channel because I, I still feel like um, the reason I originally started doing these videos was because 
Um, I think Tabletop Simulator is an awesome program, and I feel like there isn't a lot around for actually getting new original things into the program. Um, and so I want to kind of keep keep going with stuff to actually make things that you guys can use um, that will let you, that will help kind of grow the community sort of in general um, and just get more stuff onto the, the Steam Workshop and just have more models for everybody so that you guys, so that none of us have to go in and do this as much because if there's a lot of people making custom content and right now there's there's more than ever um it's it's always seems to be picking up um but i would definitely like to i'm just gonna uh, let's see Ooh, i'm just gonna go into wireframe here and i'm just gonna select like all of this beard because there's a ton of beard right there that does stick out so that makes it really easy to get all of that there and we're just still going around, just knocking out as much of the model as we can at a time. Just trying to get it, get it all covered. Um, you could always use, uh, but yeah, I do intend to um, start doing some streaming. Um, I have a second channel that I currently haven't uploaded anything to yet. Uh, the digital DM or digital DM on YouTube that I will post all of any streams that I do there and any uh, and then I also have a and then I have um, on Twitch it is Zach the digital DM um, and there I will leave a link to that on as well um, and I've got a Twitter, so I'm going to try to be active on the Twitter as well. So if you guys follow that, then I'll try to put out a tweet, maybe like at least like the day of, to be like, hey, I'm going to be, I'm going to be on Twitch. And that way you guys can try to get on there. If there's stuff that you're having problems with, um, then that way there will be a place for, for you to go, essentially. Um... And we can kind of talk about stuff on the stream. We can, uh... And I was thinking that I would primarily try to kind of put aside projects that I think aren't as unique or concise as, like, this, which is specifically, like, a very certain process. Uh, most of the time when I'm doing models, I'm trying to... I'm finding what I want to do, finding what I have available... And then trying to set up the, essentially the easiest way possible to get to that point. So sometimes uh, I've had some models where the easiest way to do it is to go into um, Fuse and make an entire custom little guy. And then once I've got that, export it and rig it and pose it. And then add in like custom custom model parts or try to kit bash parts. It really depends on what's what's available um, because none of this stuff is. I'm not selling these assets or anything. So generally, I I try not to make original assets unless I absolutely have to because it's it's time consuming. And sometimes I've sometimes I have just because there's there's certain like miniatures that just nobody else seems to want you know that I specifically want for a certain campaign I'm doing or something um, and then I will go in and uh, completely make a character from scratch a lot of times I feel like Starfinder has been like that because Starfinder you know if, if you want if you want some sort of race of alien that nobody that doesn't exist then you're probably gonna have to make it yourself um, but a lot of stuff you can usually find something and then kind of work from there to get to get to the actual finished product that you're looking for. So a lot of times I'll try to do a little bit of everything. Um, but like uh, I had I had one campaign that um, we had a lot of it was uh, one of the one of the main characters wanted to, was a like a a fat wear bear paladin and 
I don't know if you've looked, but there there are no fat werebear paladins in on tabletop simulator. And so sometimes it's it's kind of like the best thing to do is just to try to go from scratch. Um, but uh, so yeah, when I do any Twitch streaming, it'll probably be a, a lot less structured than this. Um, I do have a uh, a couple D and D campaigns that I play with some friends that we're going to try to get up as podcast, and I might also, if it's a campaign that is using um, specifically a lot of a lot of models, which the ones that I run, I usually tend to use quite a few models. So if I'm doing a lot of stuff in Tabletop Simulator for a certain campaign or anything, I'll try to, A, I would like to um, stream any, the process that I'm doing in, in sort of like preparation for the sessions, just to kind of show you guys sort of what what I personally do um, leading up to a session, um, that maybe you guys can kind of see what um, what my workflow is, and then kind of see if there's anything that you want to adapt. And then also, um, I would like to try to stream some of our actual gameplay sessions because there's some there's some funny there's some funny fellows, and I think it would be a it would be a good time. So if you're interested in that, it'd also be worth it to subscribe to the Twitch stream, and I'll also leave um, as we get some podcast episodes up. I will leave those in the description as well. Um, so kind of t stay tuned for any of that if you guys are interested in, in that. Um, but primarily the biggest thing that I would really like to see come out of this is, is more kind of more input from, from the community, from you guys on, uh, getting on what what you guys tend to struggle with, what you would really like to see more content out there for, so that it will hopefully kind of confront some of the issues that you guys are running into on a regular basis. Um, because there's there's a lot there's a lot of different ways to work with stuff, and I think I I think personally that the biggest issue that a lot of people run into when they start doing this is that it's the hardest thing with it I think is um, there's a big toolbox with it because it's really it's not like designing for games or um, designing to for designing models that will eventually be 3d printed or anything there's no right or wrong way to do this stuff and if you it's really it's kind of like whatever gets the model on the table looking decent is the right way to do it and so i think a lot of times it it's it's helpful because you don't you're not stuck to all the things of needing a model that can pose you know needing a model that is actually capable of being rigged or any of that sort of stuff that you would run into for modding for other sorts of platforms um which is really nice but the other hard thing with it is that it's like it's really easy to i i think it, from my experience it's really easy to go the path that you think is going to be kind of the path of least resistance for getting this stuff set up and then you and then you get deep into it and it's like oh this is this was not the way to do it you know um and that's what I'm hoping this this video will be for you guys is that sometimes sometimes you're going to find the exact model you want and it's just way too high resolution. I know I ran into that a lot early on and that was why I kind of figured out this this sort of way of doing things is because sometimes the perfect model is right there but it is, you know, it is 800,000 vertices and there's no way you're getting that into tabletop simulator. And if you try to if you try to texture it that way, it's gonna just make your computer explode. It's it it gets it gets bad easily. So um, having kind of a technique to deal with those high resolution models is really nice. Um, and and also 
generally, I, I, that was one thing I heard in a lot of the comments from a decent amount of people on some of the older videos is people asking how to texture models from scratch. And it's generally, there's not a good answer for it because some of the texture programs that are out there are incredibly good. Um, and they're all incredibly expensive too. It's, it's something that like where Blender has really picked up on a lot of, the, on being able to do a lot of the things that you used to be only able to do with really expensive programs. Um, and Blender just kind of gives that to us for free. Um, when it comes to things like getting good textures or, um, doing a lot of, uh, doing photorealistic texturing or hand painting textures and everything. Uh, Blender has some stuff for that, um, but it's it's not it's not where Blender is with everything else. You know, when it compares to how Blender is with a lot of stuff, um, I'm just gonna select that one face there because that was being a pain. Um, yeah, when it come when it compares to how Blender is with with uh, you know its ability to model. Honestly, it's sculpting is really does a really good job of competing with like ZBrush and things like that. I've I've been playing around with some ZBrush a decent amount and honestly, it's it's frustrating to me to go into it from having been at Blender and kind of feeling like, man, Blender gives me all of this and also doesn't expect me to go through a college course worth of unique learning just for just for one program. And I, I know there are tons of people who use ZBrush, and I'm sure there's somebody somebody watching who is infuriated that I would say that. Um, but it is just it's one thing that Blender Blender gives us that is so so different is that there's so much good stuff here, but when it comes to texturing, um, I, I haven't found anything that beats honestly Substance Painter is what I will tend to use when I'm texturing, but I don't like doing tutorials with Substance Painter because it's not something that mo that everybody has. And if you know if you're not willing to drop the money on it, that's completely understandable, especially just to be doing models for tabletop simulators. So um, that's why this yeah the whole goal of these videos is to make something that anybody can get as long as you have a computer I mean honestly if you have a computer that can run tabletop simulator you have a computer that can mod tabletop simulator um in theory I think uh some of this might be I could see some of this crashing some computers but um but for the most part you can go into you can go into blender for free you can get a lot of these assets for free um and you can have any model that you want essentially for free as long as you're willing to do some of the legwork so um that's the idea of doing this um if you guys have anything in particular to um make sure that that you're struggling with or that you have questions about make sure to leave a comment i will i definitely i read every comment that i've gotten so far there hasn't been nearly enough for me to not be able to at this point so i fully intend to continue reading all the comments as well um at least as long as i can keep up with them so um yeah definitely do that i am going to speed up time right now because right now so i just have kind of a good silhouette right here where i can go in and get the the bulk of the model um selected like the bulk of his hair and everything because there's nothing around here um so i'm just kind of going in and getting all of that but um for the most part a lot of this is going to be more of the same for a bit so i'm going to um speed up time once i have this done i'm going to take a break for today and i will come back and finish the video so um i will see you guys then
Alright, last thing I want to say, so I will pick this up with the, um, I will keep this all in the same video, but I will be picking this up, um, I'm gonna take a break tonight and pick it up later, but, um, I did just want to, uh, make a note, because I haven't done that this entire time, and I really should have, is make sure to save Control S to save, and I'm gonna put it right in here, I'm just gonna name it. Berserker 1. I think they just do Berserker 11. Yes, it did. Berserker 1. Um, just save it. Make sure you're saving a lot. Go in, select everything, unselect everything, control S, save. Just save a lot, because if you don't, then you'll lose everything. I guarantee it, so. Um, but yep, I will be back, and then we will finish this up. Alright, so now we've got everything blocked in for colors, and um, I have not yet touched the material for his hair. So, we are just going to go in and make a little bit of adjustment. I don't want to go too far away from a deep red, because I want to keep that aspect of the character. And I think I'm going to increase the saturation on the shadows and then we've got a lot of heavy highlights right now so I'm going to take that and we are just going to drop it down and I don't like how patchy it currently looks so we're going to go in here and we're just going to pull we're going to actually let's see I'm going to decrease how much of it we have by lowering the value actually if I lower the value there that's not what we're looking for we are looking to raise the value on the black just so it's a little bit less intense and that seems to give it some pretty good character there. I think I'm happy with that. So he's got a natural kind of uh, color for his hair. Um, we've got all of his skin and everything done. And the nice thing with this then too is if you wanted to do multiple recolors of the same character. Um, say you wanted to just do, you know, three guys, do them all different colors. You could just take this model and then duplicate it and then duplicate all of the materials like say I want to do one with black hair then I can just select this one do a new material and we're just going to name it black hair and then in the black hair one we are just going we can just go in and make it very desaturated we'll make it pretty dark and the darkest part we can almost do a blue sort of shade and then on the highlight we would just do something like a also very desaturated and we'll drop that down some just so that it still has some dimension to it and there you go and now we've got a black bearded berserker um but i'm just gonna go back into red hair I'm just going to go back into red hair and then we can uh, we can go from here. So now we've got this all set. So I'm going to get rid of the materials panel because I don't need that right now. I'm going to save and we need to take this material and then we need to make it we're going to first step is we're going to light it. Now you could light it a few different ways. I am actually going to pull up this window a second time because now in the shader editor, there's a few things that you could do. Um, so firstly, for lighting, I mean, there's there's just a ton of different ways that you can light a character. Um, but in the top here, let's see, we can go to world instead of object. And right now there is no color in the background. And what you can do is you can download an HDR file and that will make an entire environment texture. Um, but in this case, I don't want anything there for that. So I'm just going to disconnect that. Now it's completely black. Um, if we want to get a little base color, 
we could do something like that, but in this case, I'm just going to do everything with lights. So we are going to go in and we are going to first, let's start with a sunlight and I'm just going to grab it on the Z axis. Just kind of position it where I would want it to be relative to the character. And then we're just rotating on the Z and the X axis. And I really want to get the bulk of his face. So that kind of angle should look pretty good. Um, I'm, and we're going to use several lights for this because right now, the, like if we rendered this out, m a lot of the character would be pitch black. So we don't want that. Um, so we're going to add in another light. Let's make this one a point light. And we're just going to bring it up and bring it behind him. And the size actually we probably don't need to raise up. Um, and we're going to raise up the power, let's say 100. Let's say 300. Let's say 500. Let's say 2,000. And we're just playing with it, trying to get what we want out of it. And I'm just moving it on the X and Y axis. Basically, I, my main goal is just to get the sort of intensity that I'm looking for. A lot of times what I like to do with this as well in order to, and then I'm gonna bring it further over there bring it down a little bit um, in order to get the kind of variation in intensity and everything do a strength of three let's do a strength of three and then we're going to do a little bit of playing around with the color temperature so I'm going to on the Sun I'm gonna get kind of a cool toned um, on this point light I am going to get a slightly warm toned and that way we're kind of getting We're kind of getting uh, some different sort of, and right here I'm rotating on, or I'm moving it on every axis other than the Z axis by holding by when I after I hit G to grab, I do Shift Z, and that will let me move it around just on that one axis. So now we're starting to get somewhere. I'm gonna move this forward. I'm gonna move this forward a little bit, I'm trying to get some even lighting while still getting some shadows so that that way a lot of the detail of the model will still kind of pop out. Um, I'm liking that for the most part. And, and then in the background, I don't want this this much because this just washes it out and then we lose everything. So I'm going to add in an input and RGB. We're gonna drop that in. So that's doing just a straight white right now. And we're going to drop it down and down and down and down. And we almost want it. We don't want it too strong because I do want to get that shadow from his beard. And I want all that extra detail. So I think, though, I think I'm pretty happy with that. I think that will get us a pretty good look. Um, but now, as you can also see, a lot of the specularity like how the roughness is really coming through. So you can see the uh, the shininess of the leather is really standing out. And I don't really like that. So we're going to go back into the object panel. We're going to go to the wood leather. And we're just going to play around with a little bit of this. So if I bring it up, it makes it super shiny like it's almost wet. If I bring it down, it makes it super matte. And we're kind of going for... That's a little bit more matte than I want... So I still want it to look like a material. That's pretty good, because that way we'll still get some reflections, we'll still get some gradient effects and things like that, but not too much. And then on the hair, I'm just going to decrease the roughness a little bit, just so we get some actual highlights from the uh, from the lighting. So let's let's turn it down a little bit more and see what we like. I think I'm actually liking that quite a bit. So, uh, so now I'm pretty happy with all of that. So we don't need to stay in the rendered view. I don't, I don't like looking at it too much just because 
when it's doing the, that resampling effect, it makes it hard for me to pay attention to it. So, um, so we'll go back into the look dev um, because now we've done that. Control S, we'll just save real quick. And so we've already got in, we've already got the UV map for the entire model set up. We've got the materials all set up. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take all of the lighting and everything that we baked into it here, and we are going to add that. We're going to basically bake that lighting right on top of the texture so that that way when you drop it into tabletop simulator you'll get all of this nice detailed lighting we can lower the resolution of the model and it should still look really good so in order to do that what we're going to do is we are going to in we have to do this in every material that we do so that that way it bakes every single material into it shift a and add vector Ooh, and actually we're going to add a UV map so and then we'll just select our UV map that's not necessary in this case because we only have the one UV map but a lot of times when you're working with combining different models they're gonna have their own UV map and then you're gonna be baking them to a brand new one so I like to just as force of habit just always add in a UV map otherwise you'll get some weird baking problems in it a lot of times you won't think that you didn't do that so um, so just as a general practice, I always add in a UV map and then we're going to add in an image texture and we're doing exactly what we did last time with baking the ambient occlusion. We're just going to make a new image. I'm going to call it Berserker Baked and you can name it whatever you want. Um, and I'm going to do 2048 by 2048 because this will be our final texture and I want it to be as high res as possible so it keeps all of the details. So I'm going to click on the UV map, shift click on the image, control C to copy, and then I'm going to click on the image, just the image. The reason I'm doing that is because when you go through whatever node you have selected, that's going to be what it bakes to. And I've had some problems in the past. I don't know if they fixed this in newer Blender or not, but I have had some problems in the past where if I had them both selected, it would fail to bake because I had the UV map node also selected. So I just make sure I'm always just selecting the image and we're going to go into the UV editor, go to Berserker Baked, tab, select all of it. And that way we've selected every vertices that is going to be baked and now we are going to go into the render tab. We're gonna go back down to baked. We're gonna take it off of ambient occlusion. We're gonna do combined. So we are, we are baking everything into this image. And then you just hit bake. And the ambient occlusion texture took a little bit of time to bake. This is gonna take longer. Um, from my experience, it doesn't take a huge amount of time, um, but the higher resolution the the higher resolution that the model is the more vertices you have the longer this bake takes if you have it like already down to tabletop simulator resolution like um 1300 vertices or something like that or 13,000 vertices it bakes super fast but when you're doing something higher res it takes a little longer to bake um the more lights you have that'll affect it as well if you put an hdr in that'll take longer as well um but once this is done baking then we'll have our image and then we'll proceed onward so i will be back after that all right so now now it looks like we've got everything baked i'm going to hit tab and that'll take us out of there and you can see all of the color islands and everything i have all baked properly so um if you don't get this um then i would recommend playing with making sure that in your shader editor you've gone through and you've selected the same image for every material uh, make sure you've gone in um, in the uv editor and you're in edit mode when you bake and you have selected you've hit a in order to select everything um, but it should bake just fine um and then we are going to save this image we're going to call it just berserker baked save as image that's going to take just a second and now the image is all set so if you wanted to do color variations or anything like that this would be the point where you would want to do it you would want to go in change all your materials 
bake a new image and make sure you... You can even bake it again, but then when you go to image, you need to choose save as, and then you would give it a different name, and it will keep all of your images. So, if you are going to do that, this would be the time to do it. Um, because once we go past this point, we're going to lower the resolution of everything and get it all set. So, um, these lights, just so in case I have to go back and do anything, I'm just going to select all of them by clicking and then shift clicking on the other ones. I'm going to hit M to move, go new connect collection, and I'm just going to name this collection hidden because we don't do layers in the newer blender. And I'm just going to uncheck the box so that they're gone. So now we've got just the model and the model will have its baked textures. So I'm going to duplicate this model by holding shift D and then I'll attach to the mouse, right click, it'll stay right where it is. We're going to move that to the hidden collection. That way, if we need to go back, we always can. Um, and what we're going to do now is we're going to go into the shader editor and just to make sure that this worked with everything, I'm going to delete all of the materials. So now it's just the skin tan material. Um, and I'm going to do new. I'm just going to name this baked. And we're going to go to color. We're going to drop that into the base color. And we're going to go to emission. This isn't necessary, but I like to do it just so I get a very accurate view of how it's going to look. We drop it into emission. And this is exactly how this is going to look on Tabletop Simulator. Um, and depending on, you know, how you feel about it, I, I feel like it's a little heavy on the sunlight. Um, but I think I might stick with it. He's lost some vividness. Um, ordinarily, I would probably go in and lower the sunlight and lower the other side lights and everything. Um, but I do like how much shadow I'm getting. So I think I'm going to stick with it. And we're just going to go go with it exactly the way it is. So now we know that our texture is right. I'm just going to save it again. And so since our texture is right and it's all baked correctly, I am just going to... Um, you can do this with any model that has a base and has a scale that you like from Tabletop Simulator. You can go to my other video on that covers kind of how to rip models from Tabletop Simulator. Um, I'm just going to take one that I've got from an older file and just import it. Um, but you can uh, always go in and um, and import a file uh, directly from Tabletop Simulator uh, to get the base that it has. So um, I'm going to go in and in some of my Warhammer 40k models, I've got a, a base that I tend to use for everything. Um, and also, I like this because then it gives me a scale. So I can see that's the size of a Space Marine in regular Tabletop Simulator. So if I scale this down to that size, I know he's going to function basically the same if I want to get it up to the same size as that model. Like if I want to get it up to the maximum bigness of that model, I can do that. If I want to bring it down to the minimum smallness, I can do that. So that's why I bring in another model is so I have a relative sense of scale so I can go in and scale the model. And I'm just gonna scale, oop, I'm just gonna scale them down. I'm just hitting S to scale. I'm just gonna scale them down a little bit more just to make him of a proper size. Now that I've got the size where I want it, I'm just gonna go into edit mode, hit Alt A to deselect everything, hover over the base, hit L, and then hit P to separate by the selection. So now I can just delete the Space Marine off of there and I can go in and set up my guy exactly where I want him. Sometimes I go into wireframe mode just to make sure that his height is good. And now that is looking pretty good. Um, so I'm going to shift select these, control J to join them. I'm going to delete the default OBJ and I'm just gonna go into edit mode um, and in the image editor I'm going to or actually not the image editor my mistake the UV editor I'm gonna select just the base 
uh, hover over the image, hit A to select the model, and I'm just going to drag it over to a, this right now, it, this uh, base is not UV unwrapped. You could also, if you do have a UV unwrapped base and you want to get, what I'm doing is getting a singular specific color for it. Um, if you wanted to get this effect and you already had a UV unwrapped base, then what you can do is um, just go over to the UV set, select it, and then hit S to scale, and then just zero. And that will scale it down to a singularity, basically. Um, so now we've got, I like this green, so I'm going with this green for his base. Um, that'll just kind of help him to, when he's on a base with a lot of other miniatures, it'll help to kind of read and everything. I'm gonna hit P again separate the selection and then now and I'm just going to name this guy Berserker and I'm going to name this one base and I'm just keeping them separate so I can move them around or anything the final thing that we are going to want from uh, from blender is we're going to want a collision box which I've done in a previous video I'm just gonna do it here though um, because there's a little bit with the UI changes that I think it'll help to see it. So we're just going to do shift a to add in, we're going to do a mesh. We're going to do a cube. Um, and we're going to go into the object panel, go down to viewport display, display it as wire. So we can always see through it. I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm going to bring it up and I'm holding down shift just to fine tune the movement, grab on the Z and then holding down shift just to get it really nice and close. I'm going to go to the front and scale it on the X just to get that pretty close. And I am going to inch it a little bit this way just because the majority of his body is this way. Uh, we're going to go to the side view, scale it on the Y. We're just doing the same thing. Grab it. I'm going to bring it forward a little bit. And then we're in the face selection mode, so I'm just going to click on the top to grab the top. Uh, go back to front view, drop it down, and I usually drop it just a little bit below his head. And there we go. Now we've got the collision box, so this is going to actually determine how things bump into him and stuff. Um, a lot of times, in terms of performance and things, if you make the collision box narrower, it's going to be more top-heavy and more prone to tipping over. If you make it really flat, then it's kind of if you want to adjust how it angles or anything, sometimes it'll be really resistant to that. So it really comes down to what you want from your collision box. A lot of times I don't like them tipping over easily. So usually it's not a super narrow collision box. Um, but that is all set. I'm just going to name this Collider. And we are all set there. So now we just need to select the model and shift select the base. I'm just gonna save here real quick because we have finished up everything. File, and then we are going to export an OBJ. Oh, actually, I completely forgot a very important part. So now we, if we go down and look at our faces, we're still at 121,000 faces, and that is going to be too many for Tabletop Simulator. If we exported this and imported it into Tabletop Simulator right now, it would not load, we'd get a failed load error. So. We're going to go into the modifier, and we are going to decimate it. So I'm going to do 0.25. That's going to get us down to 30,000. That's still too many. Um, 0.15. It's going to get us down to 18,000. Technically, that might work, but I'm going to drop it down a little more. 0.1. That'll get us down to 12,000, and that should be good. Sometimes you will notice that there will be some oddness with the model but for the most part i think that is still looking pretty good so i think i'm happy with that um so we've still got our original model but i'm going to duplicate this because i do need to add apply that modifier so i'm going to duplicate it move that one to the hidden set and we are going to apply the decimate modifier to this model so now that it is applied we're just going to shift click on this and now we're looking at 12,657 vertices or faces. So that will be, that should definitely be good for tabletop simulator to be able to load. So we go file export OBJ. We're going to just leave it as berserker one OBJ export. 
It's going to take just a second. Sometimes it'll act like it's freezing up. It's not freezing up. It's doing just fine. So just let it do what it needs to do for as long as it needs to do it. And now it's done. The problem is I just realized part of the reason it took so long was because I did not hit the selection only button. We want only what we have selected. So it exported the lights, it exported the high-res model, it exported the decimated modified model, and it exported that one. So that's why it took so long. We hit OBJ, export, it's done already because it's so much smaller of a model, so a lot less information. Um, so now we did that. We're just gonna click on the cube, file, export, OBJ. I'm just going to name this one. I do this standard for all of mine is just name it Berserker1 underscore call for Collider and selection only. Export. That should go very quickly and we are done with that. So we've got our image texture, we've got our model, and we've got our Collider. So let's jump into Tabletop Simulator and get that set up and we'll get it imported and see how it looks. And I will be right back. All right, so here we are in Tabletop Simulator, and I have nothing. I am going to go into Objects, Components, go to Custom. And there it is. And we're just going to do Custom Model. We are going to drag it in. It's going to have this whole thing here. And I am just going to navigate to my file. And there it is. We're just going to select that. Upload it to the cloud. I upload it to the cloud so that that way I can host any of my models on the workshop. Or if I, if I bring it into a game that I'm playing online with other people, as long as you upload it to the cloud, they will be able to see it. Um, for the t uh, diffuse slash image, we're going to choose the baked image and I like to wait for these to completely finish just because sometimes I get some weird errors with those and then we're going to do the collider for the collider we're going to check figurine so that it stands upright when you pick it up and import and it looks like we are good and there we go And because of the fact that it's part of the nature of how Tabletop Simulator works, I'm just going to switch it to wood. I'm going to put the specular intensity at 0.0, .0 import. There we go. I don't like getting anything from, uh, from Tabletop Simulator uh, in terms of shading or anything and it'll do it'll make it all glossy and metal looking if you leave it like that so there it is and now we have it imported um and overall i think it's looking pretty decent um play around with the lighting however you want um if i imagine that this level of detail that we did here i imagine it being appropriate detail for like an npc character or if you're using it for random enemies and things like that. If I were doing this for like a, a PC, um, I would probably go in and I would probably do like the fur. I would go in and make a different material for the wood versus the leather to make the straps pop a little more and everything. Um, it really depends on what your purpose is with the model. I think if you're just using it for like uh for like an unnamed enemy in encounters and things like that i wouldn't bother going through that much trouble um but that's all up to how you feel about it or if you're using him for wargaming or something um i wouldn't you know if he's not like a named character or something i probably wouldn't want to do 10 materials for him but um that's completely up to you how you like to work um but yeah this is the technique that I've kind of worked out for setting up models to work in Tabletop Simulator from a completely sculpted model. Um, this should work, honestly, for 
any sculpted model, the lower res that they are, the more muddy the details there are, they you'll have a harder time doing it, just picking out all the details and everything. Um, if they have really crisp details, then it makes it a lot easier to get everything that you want out of it. Um, so I will... I will have to find out. I have to check with the owner of the Patreon for Asgard Rising just to see if I can get their permission to put this model on the workshop. If I can, and um, and he's okay, and they're okay with it, then I would like to potentially do several of these models, drop them all into Tabletop Simulator, um, just because I think it would be a very cool. I could see it being a fun thing to do on Twitch stream or something like that too. Um, so we will see what I find out. Um, if I can, I will make these files available and they will be in the description. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I will try to keep getting more things set up. My next big one that I would like to do is doing a character um, using Fuse for character creation because that's open source and then going in with Blender and doing modeling all of their extra stuff. Um, so if you guys are interested in that, make sure to definitely subscribe and I will try to get that out sooner than two years from now. So thanks a lot guys for watching and I hope you have a good time modding. Thanks. Bye.